Are you excited, Si? Oh, yeah. I'm excited every time I come up here. Jerry. I'm excited every time I see you. Right, well, well welcome to the Duck Call Room. You're hearing a new voice at the beginning. I normally just sit here and laugh, but we have a development. Martin is under the weather, so we replaced him with an all-pro, all-star, right. big-time movie star. We brought in a ringer. She is a celebrity, maybe the biggest deal in town for quite a few years. That's right. She had her own show. She had her own show. She owned a restaurant. And she's decided to come join us here at the Duck Call Room podcast. Miss Kay. Miss Kay Robertson is in the building. Hello. (laughs) Greetings, everybody. Now, what I heard was the reason they wanted me to come up here. They needed somebody sweet on this podcast. Yes, that's exactly right. Because there's just all this man uh, ways. Well, no, that ain't actually true. (laughs) It's not I'm true. so sweet, okay. I don't y'all don't need to send me any sweets. Okay, I'm too sweet si, already. Sai, you can you're not supposed to lie <laughs> when you're talking to people. Si oh, that ain't a lie. I am sweet. Okay, Kat Sai has perfected the art of lying without lying. That's right. That's a great way to put it, Stone. Yep. He just it's ninety five percent truthful. That's right. it as is. always. And you, you but you left out the most important part. You left out the maker of the best pies oh. in, I'd say, this side of the Mississippi River, you will not find a better pie than what Miss Kay makes. I don't care what. Maybe which, even which the other side of the Mississippi River. Maybe both. We got sides. a lot of questions for you today, Miss Kay. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. What he said is true. <laughs> I did not. I did not say it. I'm saying people like him and all of y'all who've eaten my food will know I am. God just made me an excellent pie maker. I make all my crust homemade. Mm-hmm. I want that noted. Noted. And they I, are delicious. Well, and there's it, a there's a reason we call it the Duck Commander 50. Once you start working here, you hang out at Miss K's table and you all we all get bigger. Well, uh back when back in the day, Miss K would cook a meal for everybody every day. I did. So, for like 30 years. That was before my time. Well, too bad. <laughs> you would have been a lot bigger by now. I would have been, because I love your food, Miss Kay. She's trying to been fighting me up for 50 years. She well, that never there. worked. No, nope, it never worked. You're getting this close This is just now. too many Twinkies. <laughs> I used and to call him Skeletor, because I could see the skeleton bones. <laughs> and thank you so much, Si, for just changing clothes in my living room. And Si, I would, I'd say, Si, I'm in here. He, you know what he'd say? Well, you're just like my sister. You are. I know, because we've been together since he was, what, 11 or 12 years old. Whenever you met met your husband. Yeah. And Cy was on all our dates. You know about that. I was the shepherd. Oh, we've talked about it here on this podcast, which I forgot to mention. If you're listening, thank you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple. YouTube.com slash Duck Call Room. Like and subscribe, as Cy likes to say. Look, so thanks for signing up for the YouTube, subscribing. Somebody's about to win a Zoom call with this guy. I don't know when that's happening. I'll check in. We'll put it in the comments. But somebody's going to win a Zoom call with you. And our friends over at Scoremaster, we're going to talk about it later. They're going to give you a chance to win free shirts and stuff free with your face boys. on it and duck call room stuff. Right, there you go. I think we're just going to dive right into it today because I'm excited that Miss Kay's here. And last episode, we asked a ton of questions for Miss Kay. But you kind of hit on it already. What was it like dating Phil and Cy? Si? Because you were basically, all I've ever heard is you triple You know, when dates. I ever thought I wanted like a brother, all that flew out the window. <laughs> when I got him, it was like, I was like, Phil, is he going to come on all our dates? Well, I need him to help us. Because look, what one of Phil's dates would be is we're going to go sail a pond and get all these little fish and little things to put on the trot lines. Well, I thought that was sounded fun, you know. So me and Si are out there doing it. And then I said, Phil, I think something just hurts my leg. It felt like a snake. It wouldn't be a snake. Oh, there ain't no snakes out here. There ain't no snakes. I said, why? I think it was one. And Si said, well, I didn't see it. So naturally, then they wouldn't believe me. 
So I guarantee I was out there with a snake, but he didn't bite me. But here we'd go with all that stuff. And then we went back and sigh, you're going to remember this. And if you don't, I'm going to bop you in the head. Do you remember them long worms that were that long? Oh, yeah. We picked oh, them yeah. Up. Well, do you remember when you we were going to put them down my back and we ran through a whole cornfield <laughs> and you were chasing me and you finally caught me and stuck those stupid worms down my back? I never did forgive you for that. <laughs> yeah, they're, been, they're called river worms and they only live in clay. Yeah. And when it would rain, you could literally just pick them up off the ground. Hundreds of them. That's really true. I saw them. Yeah. Well, why mean, did you hundreds. decide to be so mean to put them down my back? Hey, that's what kids do, Kate. I know. They yeah, put bugs but on But I wouldn't be two, uh, two years older than you. I know. We was kids. You no. was, what, 14 when you met Phil? I was. I was 14 when I met Phil. And <laughs> and then when I took you to help ra- have raisin. Because I'm telling you, here we were, all three of us. He's in the back seat. We're in the front seat. They'd, they'd pull up. If somebody'd pull up beside him and tell me, who's that in the back? And Phil would say, oh, it's just I don't worry about it. Yeah, aren't y'all glad I had a car, though? All right, that's it. <laughs> car and groceries. Yeah, I, we had a grocery had a store. store. You owned a grocery oh, store? Yeah. My mom and dad did, that's and my awesome. uncle and aunt. And so I just kept taking things to their house. Like I brought a, a 24 case Coke in the bottles like they used to have. You know what they did? They uh, ate, uh, they drank every one of them at last, one sitting. Yeah, that last. So I was just, yeah, that and last, then he put it down, got another one. Yeah, got, that would last about 45 minutes. 24. I mean, I never saw people do that before. <laughs> well, okay, we ain't never had Cokes. <laughs> Obviously, and I'm not, uh, case, you know, hey. my mother had to shut me down because she said I was we were going to go in the hole if I kept taking all the food down there. And the Kay loaded what was it, Chevrolet? Uh huh, a Bel Air. Bel Air Chevrolet. Blue Bel Air. She'd come pulling up in the yard. It'd be loaded down with all kinds of snacks and and cases of cokes. Yeah, oh, that sounds like a great girlfriend slash. Oh, it was. Oh no. Girlfriend in law? Uh, oh, yeah. That's hilarious. Let me tell you, I don't know if Phil loved me for my money, for the car, for the food, or for me. I don't know. He he liked it all. I think so. He was a little bit of all of it. Yeah. Well, he's been around for a while. How long have you and Phil been married? I don't know. It's some 50 something years. 50 something. I can't keep up with that. <laughs> she, she doesn't know. <laughs> what year were you married in? <laughs> Which, Allegedly. Which one? Which time? We got married more than once, but that's a long story. I ain't going into all that. <laughs> okay. Because that, that's a lot of questions. But yeah. So you married into the Robertsons. I did. And Stone did too. So a lot of people are asking what that's like. Yeah. Besides just having okay. well, whatever a, this it's is. It's an adventure. <laughs> They're okay. very different. That's, that's to put it mild. <laughs> oh, no. It's a... a uh, What's a, a, a adjective for a real good adventure? Sure. Married into the Robertson. An, an wild epic, man. Hey. Epic. Adventure. You were wild man. Uh, All of a you. A fantastic were. voyage, as Coolio would say. Yeah, uh, that's a good. That's a good. Fantastic analogy. voyage. That's I'll a, tell a you what. One thing. Voyage with Sorry. the Robertson family. <laughs> Do you not agree that a Robertson and Jay's gonna agree with this too? You cannot make them do what they don't want to do. No, you, you can't get them to admit when they're wrong either. Exactly. Well, we're never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the and thing. how many times have you heard them say, I'm sorry? Oh, look, me, me and Nan's been married for 16 plus years. Not one time has she told me she was sorry about something. Or <laughs> that it was her fault. Or <laughs> she was wrong. And she's the sweetest girl you oh, ever yeah. met, but oh, yeah. she's a Robertson. She's a Robertson. So she can't break the code. Can't break the code. And like me, I told Phil, I said, I want to hear <laughs> I'm sorry. He said, well, I already, I'm acting like that. <laughs> I said, well, I want to hear the words. No, I can just act like it. I don't look, have to so, say the look, words. Look, the Robertsons are so caring. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're always worried about somebody else, especially if they 
trip and hurt yourself or something? Yeah, oh, yeah. You're the you least laugh. compassionate people <laughs> no. No, on we... the face of the earth. You're just <laughs> sitting there lying. He's lying. <laughs> He's uh, lying again. So, okay, y'all been married 50-something years. Yeah. yeah. How many times have you heard the word, I was wrong, the words, I was wrong, that phrase? He tried to say it one time, but he goofed that up. He didn't even say it right. <laughs> he goofed it up. Because <laughs> we have a deal. I've, I've noticed it early on, it, when, especially when, during hunting season, when something bad happens, and I use bad loosely, uh, I wouldn't consider the things that, that are called bad, bad as somebody flares a duck. Oh, yeah, that's you know, a crime. There's no. got to be somebody to take the blame Blame shifters. For that, whatever it is. No matter what happens, you got to have the blame going. And guess who they always point a finger at? It's probably Stone. No. No. You? No, me. It's always been me. <laughs> okay. Poor My side. whole life. You've okay. always been riding in the back seat. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I've always been, you know, oh, yeah. Just a, a hey, you know, a, a extra tire back there. You know. An extra tire. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, that I, extra tire sure could eat well from me. I'll tell you that. I'm liking this brother sister intervention going, so we're going to continue this right after this break. All right, there you go. Sai, you know what I find super confusing? What insurance? Is Interest? It insurance? <laughs> oh, insurance! And that's why I've signed up for Policy Genius. It is the best thing ever. It compares the rates for you. You don't have to be some, it, like you. I feel like you ought to have a degree in insurance these days to even buy it. But with Policy Genius, they make it easy to compare home, auto insurance, all in one place. They can help it. You find it all at a lower price, and they'll actually get you paid. They save shoppers up to one thousand fifty-five dollars per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. So That's with these guys, cool. they do all the work for you, all the confusing stuff. They boil it down to simple, and they save you money. What would you spend that extra money on? Uh, probably a poker game. Probably a poker game. That's more poker money. Well, so, hey, look, getting started is easy. Head over to policygenius.com slash sci and answer a few quick questions, and they're going to take it from there. They're going to compare all the top insurers, Progressive, Allstate, and find you the best price for you. So head over to policygenius.com slash sci, and they're going to do it for you. All right, they do the work. You can save the money. It's the best deal ever. And Cy, si, here's the deal. They save shoppers up to $1,055 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. Go there okay. right now. Po well, after this episode. PolicyGenius.com slash Cy. So I want to know from you, okay, uh, we, hear, we hear it from Cy si all the time. Cy si claims he was the person that gave Jace his name. Well, well, in a way that's true because when he was in Vietnam and I was pregnant with Jace, Phil wanted to say, why don't we, and this was in case something happened to Sarah or whatever, that we're going to name him after him, Jason Silas Robertson. But then I did not know that that was going to make Jason act like Cy. Si. <laughs> but it really did. Everybody wants to know who I fuss with the most with my kids. The one that was named after Uncle Cy. Si. Yeah. Jason Silas Robertson. Well, here, here's how Uncle Cy si said it went down. He said, you, were, you had just given birth in the hospital, and y'all have not decided on a name well, for this baby yet. So you told Cy, si, go down there and find Phil, find out what he wants to name this kid. I think they added so, to that. So Cy si runs down to the river, yells off the 50-foot river bluff, hey, what do you want to name this kid? And, and Phil says, I don't care. He said, name, I don't care. I've name, done my part. Name him after you. Well, that <laughs> might have uh, happened, but <laughs> that might have happened like that. I don't remember. And I've but, heard that story, and Phil yelled back, Willie Jess. And I asked Willie, he goes, I don't know, I wasn't no. there. And no. so nobody he knows the truth he didn't of the yell story. Oh, y'all have made up so much stuff. Yeah. <laughs> now you're just so Phil didn't me. throw a name back. He said, hey, no. what do you expect me to do about it? I've done my part. Yeah. No, That's I what he said. <laughs> I want to tell you, number one, you want to know how Alan got his name? Yes. 
because we watched a movie called Shane, and the star was Alan Ladd, and I loved that name, and I liked that movie. So when he said, why don't we name our son Alan? And we did. So there's number one. Yeah, yeah there's number two. And Jace, I, well, I don't know how that all went down. I, so I remember some of it, but I know it's because we wanted to name or he said that. I don't remember how that all that went down at the end, but we did named him after Cy, si, which was si. a mistake. <laughs> and then number three. Hey, the reason that he was like me is I, we, me and Christine kept him when we moved down there and lived oh, with you did. A while. Yeah, he lived with you <laughs> one day too many. I'm telling yeah. you, that's the truth. <laughs> and then <laughs> Willie Jess was named because my daddy's name was Willie. Willie Ezel. Caraway. That was my daddy. Your Willie daddy's was his name, name was Willie. Yeah. I've never heard that. And I know, so I'm opening up to America. And then <laughs> You heard it here first, America. Okay. That's right. And Jess I, I read a book and I heard, I read that book and I said, I like that name. So that's why we picked that name. Now the next one, Jules Jephthah Robertson. Okay. Jules came from a Huel Brenner. I think that's his name. He was an old movie star. Yul Brenner. Jules. Yul Brenner. The Magnificent and, Seven. Thank you. That's right. That's correct. We saw that movie, liked the name, so Phil wanted to ma- name him that. And then Jephthah was somebody in the Robertson older back back generations. They had, a, a, I think he was like Judge or something. It was Jephthah was his was name. Great, 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 great yeah. daddy Robertson. Yeah. And they spelled it different gel, than yeah. I did, but that's where that name came from. And and then we have our daughter Phyllis that was just named by somebody else because we didn't have her till she was forty four. Forty four. You're incredible, Miss Kay. I'm enjoying this episode so much. But, um, but the fact that she was named Phyllis is I mean, pretty much a yeah. giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome uh, to the duck call. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, the best part was, I, and uh, Phil and her dad would have got along great. Yeah, they only met one time. Because yeah. he was Willie, he, huh? Willie, yeah, yeah her dad. Okay, because he, he loved the fish and hunt and all yeah. that stuff. But see, he when uh, Phil met him when we dated the first ninth grade, fourteen years old, we dated. We started going together. I guess going steady, that's what you called it. And then Phil broke up with me in hunting season because he said I was interfering with hunting season. <laughs> so I just like, what? And that's what he said. So we broke up. But he had met my dad. Well, then in May, my dad died, and he was 49 years old, had a just a big, massive heart attack. So I hadn't. I saw Phil at school and all that, but you know he's uh, he's just being rude. So too, too busy hunting. <laughs> so then he came to the funeral, my dad's funeral, and when I saw him, I was like, "Wow!" And then he came over and talked to me, and then he said, "You want to go out Friday night?" And I said, "Yeah." So that was it, and we were never apart again, except for me. I was always alone. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you were never apart from Sai. They had a camp. Look, they had a camp. For Sai and Phil, yeah. I was never apart yeah. from them. They had a camp up there and had P Rose, okay? We'd go up there, you know, Phil and me, and then we'd meet her and go pick her up, go to the camp, go fishing. And just, it was the greatest thing to watch, okay? Kay is in the back of the P row and Phil's paddling. up front paddling. <laughs> You're the paddler? Oh, yeah. This is all over Black Bow. I'm talking about like from we showed up there like 12 o'clock noon and, and it's six thirty seven going on 7 o'clock getting dark. Kay's been paddling the field over time. Hey, paddle me over that log over there. You know, he th- <laughs> catch bass. He had his girlfriend paddling oh, yeah. so he could be hands free to oh, fish. Yeah. So he could no. fish. Oh, yeah, fish. He Do sure you did. remember that? But you might know this one. So I was paddling and he told me to go under those trees. Because he thinks it's fish under there because he thought I'm jumping. So I go under the trees, and what happens is the moss is there, and then all of a sudden about 100 spiders start running all over me. 
and I started screaming. He said, Shh, be quiet. You're going to scare the fish away. I said, I've got 100 spiders on me. And I said, I'm leaning back. And I leaned back, all right, and flipped out of the boat. You fell out of the boat. I fell out of the boat. And, and then he said, well, you scared all those fish away. That's it. Fish I said, <laughs> I could drown. Oh. So that was really a fun trip. Miss Kay, you are an angel here sent down from God above because I don't know how you made it. Oh, I don't know how you I'm You were alive. paddling. Your first couple dates were sane in ponds with oh, this yeah. character. Yeah. Touching you, snakes. Hey, she was getting used to the pioneer life. She married a pioneer man. Yeah, and that was okay. kind of a crop, really, <laughs> because, I mean, some things pioneer like are good, and some were, I mean, I was the hired hand, <laughs> and I wasn't even paid. In fact, I paid for everything. <laughs> so were you, before you met Phil, you weren't hunting and fishing? Oh, yeah, see, I loved that my daddy hunted fish. Okay, yeah. And so I was loved that kind of man, because my daddy was that kind yes. of man. So I did love that. But... Your daddy probably let you hunt and fish. You weren't just the no, decade. No, no, I was, I was a helper, but I, I, I mean, he was, no, he didn't make me do stuff. He did the work, but he was, I loved to observe him and watch him, and I loved all that. I just loved it. That's awesome. Your granddaughter is just like you. BK. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. BK is really a legend is. on this podcast. She really is. Yep. I know she's a miniature girl, but she is a tough Fisherman, hunter, and you know she likes to bake. And I'm teaching her how to bake. Oh, she can make my biscuits Ooh. and my sour cream pound cake. Also Can't known you? as bullfrog yeah. is what yeah. the people know her by. But she uh, she, she makes Kay's biscuits on a regular basis. Fluffy. Every time she walks in my house, Phil's ask her to make a cake, that sour cream pound Ooh. cake. She said, okay. And she just goes in there and whips it up. I said, you want me to help you? She said, no, I can do it myself. BK is a legend. Oh no no, she is. So she's. I I knew her as the. I didn't know she could cook too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. She, oh, she does it all. She got a sewing machine. Yeah, she can cook. She sews. Hunts, she's learned. Fishes. She's learned how to play the piano. I'm gonna tell you something. Some, some man yeah. is gonna be the luckiest man on earth that gets her. She yeah. is a pioneer woman. She is. If she can hunt fish, a cook, modern oh, yeah. And, and how old is she? Thirteen. Thirteen. But yeah. she looks about ten. Yeah. Well, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Somebody, somebody's gonna get real lucky. They gotta get by me first. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the first couple are not gonna be lucky because they might get put in a. What is that thing you did to me the other day? There's a hundred different. Whenever things. I was Sleeper. about Sleeper hope. Yeah. Oh, that was just a standing guillotine yeah. choke. Yeah, yeah. Right. Put in a standing <laughs> guillotine, guillotine chokehold. Choke so if anybody, uh, if there's any young men out there, like mm, BK sounds interesting. First, remember there is Mister Stone. So look at yeah, out. he's scary now that he got so tough. He is but tough. he really is strong and tough. I'll tell you that. That is true. Well, how about this? How about we take another break? And yeah. I want to dive more into those four boys that you birthed because Ooh. I work for one of them, and there's lots of questions about them. Oh, good. Well, I'm ready. I can't wait. <laughs> Stone. What? Do you own any firearms? Yes. Do you, are you even going to tell us how many you own? No. Are you well protected? Yes. That's what I like to hear. And you know what? Nearly 5 million other people purchase firearms in 2020. Because right now it's kind of weird in America. And have you bought ammo lately? Yes. It's through the roof. So it's hard to train because you go out and try and shoot targets. It costs a lot of money, and that's why iTarget was invented. They give law-abiding citizens like ourselves a cost-effective way to train in the safety and privacy of our own home. You just download the app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and start your training experience. You dry fire with a laser into the app. It comes in all the major calibers, and today you can save 10% and get free shipping with the offer code DUCK at checkout. So when you go to iTargetPro.com, it's the smartest way for you to practice, and it pays for itself in one day because you're not spending money on the bullets. That's the letter itargetpro.com. itargetpro.com, offer duck. Hey, Harvey from Lakeland, Florida, he listens to our show. He bought it. He says it's awesome. And within the first 15 minutes, 
He's already saving money because he has shot that many times. There's it's, no such thing as too much training. Yeah, because, hey, when it hits the fan, you're going to want to be trained. That's right. I'd be missing everywhere. Stone's going to be on target, though. That's why I got an eye target to help me. What was that? Uh, it's our... It's the thing that... It makes noise. All right, anyway, we're back. Uh... So, Miss Kay, we got a few questions for you straight from the fans about your sons. Oh, great. And we've already, so Jace was the toughest because that was one question. <laughs> he thought he was. <laughs> no, like the toughest to raise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt? No doubt. Jace, hands down. All right, but who, then this is a weird question, and I don't know that we should read it because it could open up another can of family worms, but Chucky... Uh, asked, who is your favorite son? That's a tough one. That makes me nervous. I'm not supposed to say that. (laughs) Although, (laughs) I'll say the one most like me. How about that? That don't mean it's a favorite. That's Jephthah. Jep. Also the favorite. The baby. (laughs) The baby? Yeah, because he does have some of my characteristics. He will, he will be able to you can make him do something that he started out to say he would do. None of the other Robertsons would do that. But Jep can be bribed, talked into, <laughs> loved, do everything, and he will come down and do it. For the right price. He'll do pretty much anything. <laughs> okay. Well, your wife's like that, too. Yeah. But if, <laughs> Nancy, if you didn't now, know that, you now, need to Nancy, know it now. Nam says, show me the cash. Uh, oh, I'll, she, I'll ask you if she can do something, and she'll say, well, let me see. I said, oh, yeah, and I'm tipping, too. Oh, yeah, I can do it. What time? Where? Yeah. When? <laughs> what? What do you want me to do? Well, I agree with that uh, lifestyle. Uh, and yeah. then another question from Denise. So a lot of people that watch our show, they got families themselves, and you know, we give out – Cy gives out life advice. I don't know if you've heard any of it. It's great advice. Mm-hmm. I, I've watched y'all. You do? Not regular. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised at I all. Be- I binge watch y'all. Uh, okay, that's good. That, that that counts. I'm counting that as a win. Um, but Denise asked, how often do you talk to your boys? Because you got one that I don't know where he lives anymore. He used to live in my neighborhood. Sometimes he lives in Austin. I got no clue what's going on. Yeah. And then Jephtha lives in Austin. And when you can't get a hold of Willie, you always call me. So how often are you checking in on... The heathens. Well, uh, quite often as I can. Now, Al and I are close. We talk real often. And then I call Jep. In fact, I talked to him three times yesterday. Willie, he's gotten nice because I think I scared him one time because I thought I was having a heart attack or something. And so now he answers more calls than he doesn't, you know. But then sometimes he's just off the grid. So that's when I call you. I and always get calls from Miss Kay. She goes, hey, John David, where's Willie at? And I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure. She goes, well, he won't answer his phone. Go find him. And so then I go find him for you. I mean, I am his mother, you know. You would think he would answer. I gave him life. In he bur- should remember that. And now, Jason, I'd love to talk to him more. But, again, he's he's too busy. And he's not a phone person. Or when he comes in, I say, can I get a hug? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Like, oh, I have to endure this, but it's okay. She's my mom. She cooks good and all that. And I love him, and he's, he's good. But uh, oh, he so, is not a talker. Uh, we're so caring. Uh, <laughs> I'm being Sai's sarcastic. Just blowing. Sai, yeah, you've been I'm being blo- sarcastic if you don't uh, know from this. From what I understand, it, it comes from a long line of – of uh, Robertson men that cared for one another and was always checking on each other. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest lie I've ever heard come out of your mouth. I have a question for you too, Miss Kay, because you just said it. Whenever Jace comes over, he said, yeah, Kay. I'll oh, guess. why they call yeah. me? Because I could never imagine being like, hey, Jan. Oh, I got that Oh, out. Janice. Come over here, Janice. Like, I, I'm... <laughs> I'm not okay. afraid of my mom, but that would be weird. I do have yeah. the answer, in my opinion, of that. Fifteen years, Granny and Paul 
Phil's mom and dad live next to us, right side, yep. right close. I mean, we could just yep. walk there in, t- in three minutes. Okay, they lived there. It was the raising of Jason and Willie Jess and, and Jep, too, right there. The most Alan was getting older, so he wasn't just at our house all the time. But so we had a tier of there's Granny and Pa up here, there's Kay and Phil here, and then the kids. So somehow, because Granny and Paul were above us in, I don't know, respect or love. You know what I'm talking about. They were the older ones. They were the ones. So somehow, Jason and Willie, um, uh, let's see. No, uh, Jason and Willie, yeah. They were like Granny and them's first, so we're second. So somehow through that, we became not their mom and dad, but the, we were their mom and dad, but they felt like they could just call us Kay and Phil because they had a higher, you know, grandmother and grandpa that were the most respected and the most. So we came down some from being like mom and dad, and we just all was best friends, I guess. So what did they call them? Uh, Granny and Paul. So there was Granny and Paul and Kay and So Phil. Willie and Jason called y'all Phil and Kay? They call us that right now. Oh, okay. They do. Right. But then Jep calls me mom, and Alan does, and calls Phil dad, and then, yeah, that's what yep. they do. Yep. Al and Jep call them mom and dad. So it's just Willie a, and Jace, Phil and Kate. There was some strange. And I'm not upset about that. Everybody else is upset. I don't care. I mean, they love us. I know they would help us if we need it. And everything, and if they want to call me Phil and Kay, we don't, me and Phil does not, we did not care. We don't care. Well, yeah, for all the making fun of the Robertsons and their caring attitudes and the four boys you raised, y'all actually are all super close. Yep. And you you did a pretty good job at raising four rambunctious ch- I can only imagine they were rambunctious. Huh. But they all turned out all right. We don't have enough time to talk about all that. We don't? No, I mean, <laughs> what about the time when Jason, see, he was supposed to bring Willie home. This was when they were going to Pinecrest. Jason might have been going to Woodlawn. So he comes, and Willie's not to, at the pickup place that Jason said. So Jason asked his friend, where is he at? And they said he's across the street over there. And the, and he said, why isn't he here for me to pick him up? They said, well, they were having a game of strip poker over there, and and your brother seemed to want to get right in the middle of that. So Jason comes in. <laughs> Willie don't have his shirt on. Girl, and there's girls and boys playing. And I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. And he said, put your clothes back on and come get in this truck, or I'm calling Mom and Dad and let Dad come over and witness this. How old were they? Oh, they were like junior. Uh, one was, Willie was like, Seventh grade, and Jason was ninth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what about that? Strip poker, boy. Right. Strip poker, yeah. That sounds like some hot pool. Yeah, it sure does. And they probably couldn't I don't even get know you got. out of it. Uh, but you, how did, so how did they end up like this? Because now they're all, you know, I. Because I, I hear stories and I'm like, good grief. Life was tougher back then. That, They're the beating answer each other. That is, Robertson's are living proof God is alive and well. <laughs> That's exactly okay? only God could have And has a great him. sense of humor. Only he could have taken all that mess and put it back together again. I mean, it's like Humpty Dumpty fell off and broke his everything, and then he put it back together again. So that all I can say is we got God to thank for putting them back together again. Because I literally thought they were going to drive me crazy. And the night they locked me out of the house. There's, yeah. I need to hear that story. Let's take a break, and then I want to hear about you locked, locked out of the in house. By her children. While your kids are inside? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. We're going to take a break, and then we'll hear about Miss Kay's motherhood experiences more. Oh. Hey, Miss Kay, do you know your credit score? No. No, she got people for that side. Do you know your credit nope. score? Well, guess what? It's hard to figure out how to do your credit score right. And if you're not Miss K inside and didn't have a hit TV show, you probably need some help learning how to raise your credit score. And that's what the people over at Scoremaster do for you. So the average American, Si, they can add 97 points to their credit score, but they have no idea how because they don't have accountants and all these people working for them. So 
Hey, 97 points, that's just like found money. It means fast loan approvals, huge discounts, and lower interest rates. So if you're buying a car, you're buying a home, it's all going to become cheaper because you raise your credit score. Uh, my man, let me read this email over from, where is he? My man named Zach. He's from L J, Georgia. He listens to the podcast. He signed up for Scoremaster just to see what he could do. He has raised his credit score 122 points. He was on the mission to buy a new home, and now he's close because 122 points, that's thousands and thousands of dollars that he has found a way to buy a home for way cheaper than he could have. And Scoremaster's super cool, too, because they're trying to give you all free duck call room gear. We got the cool T-shirts with size face on it. Uh, so send in your story, just like my man Zach just did, at hello at duckcallroom.com before the end of this month, and let us know how Scoremaster changed your life. One happy Scoremaster customer, like this guy, Zach, he was going to get a hundred dollars. Maybe not him. I'm rooting for you, Zach. We'll get a hundred dollar gift certificate for Duck Call Room merchandise, and we'll announce the winner next month. If you haven't signed up for Scoremaster yet, you still have time to get in on this. It is so easy. It takes about a minute to get started, and if you hurry, you get to try Scoremaster for free. That's right. Try Scoremaster free and see how many plus points you can add to your credit score. So go to scoremaster.com slash duck. That's scoremaster.com slash duck. I'm going to say it one more time because this sheet's telling me to. Scoremaster.com slash duck. Go there. Go there, boy. All right. So right before the break, Miss K got fired up again about a certain action of her children. They They locked me out of the house. Now, I don't remember what led up to that, but I was so mad, and I was beating, beating on the thing, and I missed the door and hit the little glass and broke it in my door. Well, then I heard him say, oh, no, she just broke the door. She's going to kill us. <laughs> so they anyway, I got in the house. Somebody ran up there and must unlock. Then they took off running out the back door, and I took off chasing them. And I, I grabbed Phil's belt on the way out. And I said, I'm going to whoop y'all till you can't even sit down. And I chased them up and down. Finally got a hold of them. And I just had one at a time. And when I went to hit the belt with them, I had it slipped. And it turned around. And I hit myself between the eyes with the buckle. <laughs> so I, they were like, now she's hurt herself. We got to go in the woods and say, I couldn't right, We're going to have to stay that. gone they for went, a week. All I was screaming then was, wait till your daddy gets home. Ooh. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> they got that. They never locked me out again. They bring the pain. <laughs> and then I practically put my eyes out myself. Because I was too mad. And sometimes parents don't get too mad when you whip because you'll just hurt your own self. <laughs> you'll That's take right. a buckle to your own forehead. Right here, right between my eyes. <laughs> I did it. Did you ever have to discipline her children? Uh, no. no. No? You were just the fun uncle? Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> did he cause any problems? No, Besides the one Jason that caused today? the problem was Al Robertson. He's the instigator. Yep, Al was yeah, the instigator. You know what? Oh, no. We called him Sneaky Pete. He was so sneaky that he made me think he was the angel of the world because you know how nice he was. And then all of a sudden, he's the one that got them to started because they're only two and a half years apart. Jason and Willie, every Sunday for like three years, they got a whipping because they had a fight in the car. Every and we were all in that station wagon that looked like the one on vacation, Christmas vacation, all that. <laughs> and every Sunday, and it, I said, you better shut up right now. You're going to get another whipping when you get home. And then I saw one of them yank the other one's hair. Then it said, don't look at me. Don't look at me. And here they go. And every <laughs> Sunday, Phil had to take his belt off and whip every Sunday. Uh, I mean, why would they do that knowing they had it? You're talking about hard-headed. I think that was a tradition because Tommy Robertson, every time we would go to Dad's mother's house. He got a whipping. She'd bring it. She'd put food on the table and say, okay, let's eat. And we'd look. Everybody's in there. And Tommy, you know, and he'd say, hey, boy, get in here. He said, I ain't eating. Dad said, oh, yeah, you go eat. Yeah, he'd tear him up. Nope. Every Sunday. Finally, his mother just told him, said, James, I don't care if he ever eats anything here. 
but you ain't whooping him no more. He would whoop him every Sunday because that's there was a general... well. I don't know why we did it either because right. it didn't work. It quit working. Right. No, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a hard headedness of a Robertson. Thank uh, you for admitting yeah. that. Well, no, no. That's, <laughs> well, that's we're like making the, progress. That's here. like the phone. Okay. None of the Robertson men. None of them. You know, it was about hello, yeah, bye. That's about the. The conversation. I think we could sum that up in one word: manners. No, we just didn't care about a phone. Hey, if you want to talk to me, <laughs> you know what I live. It's called rude behavior. Rude behavior. That's uh, right. Nobody taught you Look, behavior. Every, every time I call Jace on the phone, oh, it's yeah. rough. He wants your phone. He says, "Yeah." His daddy does the same thing. <laughs> that's exact. A, that's that's same how he answers thing. the phone. Yeah. You call Phil. What do you want? Yeah. What do you want? It's like the, he is perturbed <laughs> you that you have made him get up and go get that phone. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you want? But then when you start talking about something that he's interested in, oh, I found some hand that got a big piece of pipe over. Hey, hey, hey. Then he'll hold a conversation <laughs> with you. The honest truth. But, that's, <laughs> that is the truth. Everything he's saying is the total truth. Rudeness well, plus. That's what I call that's it. That's it. I, I have I do have a question about rudeness sitting next to me. He told a story about hitting you with a fork at the dinner table. Oh, no, so that's what she said the first time she ate had dinner with us. Did he really stab you with a fork? Yeah, he did, and I thought I was gonna die. I mean, he said, I called for that piece. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> I mean, we all get our fork and get our chicken. And he just <laughs> stuck his thing right on my hand and I said, I, I called for that piece. That was the last piece of chicken. <laughs> so that's a true story. That, that was, is a really that's a true, true story. story. Oh, man. And that was at all y'all's I did, house? I didn't stick it. I just put it on and held it, <laughs> held it and said, I, I had called for Oh, this. you had the pork on the chicken. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I'm going to tell you something. That's so rude. <laughs> I was a guest at your house, and I couldn't even get a piece of chicken I wanted. <laughs> Oh, you already had two or three. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> that was the no, last I had piece. One, I didn't that was eat. the last piece. That's the most Robertson thing ever, right no, no, there. No, no. Either. Right. He knows how many pieces of chicken right. you had fifty something oh, oh, no, years no, no. ago. Oh no, no, we're watching. And his, well, it and was his, like they no, fried three chickens <laughs> and they ate them all, and then he's fighting over the last piece because I wanted that piece of chicken. Oh, it was so rude. <laughs> so, so if you've ever noticed when you, you're eating a meal with Phil or Cy. Si, they both do the same thing, it, especially if it looks really good. And you have that food on the, on the table. We say the blessing, and as soon as the blessing's over, Phil has a different way of doing it than Cy. But Phil will get up, he'll get his plate. Instead of, you know, fixing one for his wife or whatever, he says, let me show you boys how to do this. Y'all watching? And then he, he'll fix his plate. Number one, in the line, every time. So Bullfrog, she said, I know why Papa Phil does that. I said, why is that? She said, he wants to be the first one That's to right. get his food. I well, said, no, no. I, I said, no, he just is, wants okay, to show, you, show you, everybody how to do every it. Every time you're doing that, okay, everybody gets up there, you say the blessing, you know, and I try to be nice. I tell me, all right, uh, the guests go first. Well, they're sitting there with twiddling their thumbs. I said, hey, you going to go ahead and get in line? <laughs> Well, get out of the way and let me show you how to do it. Yes. <laughs> let me show you how to do it. Yeah. Go ahead and yeah, my that's, that's the line. Let me that's show y'all exactly. how to do it. That's yeah. what Phil does. And I said, Phil, the guests should go first. He said, well, let me show them how to do it. Like, they don't know how to fix their own <laughs> Well, plate. they don't because they always sit there. And, you know? Yeah, because you have to wait two minutes. Oh, you got to move. Yeah. Oh, I know. Phil said the food is getting you cold. Move. Get Can you plate. imagine... Uh, them growing up, ha- you know, fighting over that food. I yeah, bet I was, was there. Yeah, How many I, brothers and sisters did you have? I have one older sister, eight years older than me. That's it. That's it. You and then you were thrown into this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who, throwing forks at <laughs> no, you. No, she having... didn't throw, wasn't thrown into you nothing. You did choose. She jumped in with both feet. <laughs> well, okay. yeah. Well, and <laughs> my mother didn't like any of y'all. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> hey. hey. She said, why would you want to hook up with that poor uh, guy that, I mean, I know he plays football and all of that, but, I mean, he doesn't have any manners. He don't have any money. And he and with everything, you pay for everything. Why would you even want to hook up with him? I said, <laughs> well, he's kind of a pioneer man, and I like him. And you know what? She said, 
Well, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. She said, I'm just going to tell you. And I said, and the more you talk against him, the more I'm going to like him. <laughs> and that's what happened. That's what happened, boy. And look at you now. Yep. Yeah. It turned out all right. It took a few years. Yep. Toby Keith. How do you oh, like yeah. Now? <laughs> well, I'm glad my grandmother taught me to fight for my marriage because that's what I did. And I'm glad I did. But I'm telling you, we had some rough times because, look, I was raised rich. He was raised poor. But now he's very intelligent. But he'll say I'm a C-plus man, but that's a story. He's smarter than a C-plus. I'm the C-plus on down girl. That's a, the one thing about the Robertsons. They all have sharp minds, very sharp. They can look at things, and they don't ever forget it. Oh, yeah. Like Jace, who plays cards, why he's such a good card player. Dominoes. What? Well, he could look. He at, remembers how many pieces of chicken she had that's 50 right, years ago. That's right. You know, you play dominoes with Jace. After one round, he knows what everybody has. Yeah, it, yeah it's, he excels it's incredible. In, in poker and dominoes. But they're all really, really oh, smart. Nice. They get that from you or Phil? No, Phil. I, I Look, I wasn't the best student in the class, but I was the nicest girl at school. And I was nice to people, and I have a lot of good qualities. B- but books are not one of them. Well, I never went to school with you, but I can attest you're the nicest girl around here. Thank you. So Thank let's you. take our last break, and then we'll be back to close this one out. All right, and we're back. Um, we didn't really get to a lot of the questions going down. We just went to the Robertson history and what it's like to be Miss K. But there are we got a lot of questions about you in the kitchen. And you already told us yourself you're great at it. I love it. You love it. So, the Living the Easy Life asks, what is your favorite recipe to make? I feel like that's a big question. It's a big question, but here's what I'll give them just kind of the truth. But it's not going to be in one thing. I fell in love with rolling out dough. You know, when I was with my grandmother, when I probably started this about three and a half or four years old. And I love to roll the dough. So which makes me love all my homemade pie crust and whatever's in them. And then I love to make chicken and dumplings, which is a signature dish of mine that people, I'll tell you right now, I just made a pot this big. They're going to Sadie and Christian with just had the new baby. Mm -hmm. That's going over there. Of course, I had to take out Phil's part. And then <laughs> tomorrow, little Will called me, Willie son, and he's bringing uh, four people from Liberty that he goes to school with down to the river house, Willie's river house. So I asked, I said, what do you want to eat? I'll fix you whatever you want. Guess what he ordered? Chicken and, Chicken dumplings. and dumplings. Yeah, yeah. So I made it today, and I'm making it tomorrow, and it's all homemade. And I can attest, they are the best And I roll that dough out, and I work hard. So you Mm -hmm. make the homemade dumplings. That's right. The homemade dumplings. Because some people throw flour tortillas in there and call it a dumpling. No, no. no. That's a wrong answer. That's that's like fake news. No. Fake news. Well, because who was it? Godwin made you? chicken and dumplings no godwin went and picked some up but when you i don't <laughs> care i don't care how good a dumplings you think you got you don't put them next to miss k's dumplings and say eat this so that you that's can't just, have anyone else's chicken and dumplings. that's right because you've been sitting in the back seat of phil and k's car and, for, uh, and i tried them they weren't that bad they weren't they're edible they were they but okay, side, but compared edible. to k's you, they're that's no, not fair no, you no. can't compare them to k's no. That's like but I've spent a whole lifetime perfecting that, and my pie crust, and my other my other things, my my cornbread, and my fried cornbread, and my hush puppies, and my I make really good spaghetti and meat sauce. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. I do a great pork roast with dumplings. Spaghetti too. and meat sauce. He claimed that. He oh wanted, no, that was his final meal. Your spaghetti. Yep. That's what he uh, wanted uh, on his way out. <laughs> His last thing on earth. That that and them fried pies. Oh yeah, that fried all, apple pie. With, hey, now my fried pie them. recipe, I would put it against anyone in the country, yep. and I think I'd win. Yep. yep, no doubt. I had some of y'all's muscadine jelly this morning, just on our own toast, and oh. it was good. Y'all are just good at cooking. 
Yeah, and and like I can cook, you know. Now Jay and Phil mostly do a lot of the wild game cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, I can cook certain things of it, but I let them do what they can do because I want them to be in the kitchen. Everybody too. around here knows how to cook at some extent because if you don't, you're just going to get. Well, that's right. Well, yeah, Phil will only eat cooking from two people, and you're looking at them. both of y'all. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And look, here's what something I make every year at Christmas. What about my homemade crawfish pie mm. or homemade shrimp pie? Mm. I have the homemade crust, the most delicious middle, and the top crust. Oh. And it is seafood. Mm. Crawfish wonderful. pie? Wonderful. Yeah. Mm. And a Philly uh, gumbo. You You've this. heard that song. I've ate, I've ate some nice places in New Orleans. I've never had anything better than that. And this her homemade crawfish, crawfish pie. pie. Oh no, no, that's like shrimp. I can't eat shrimp anywhere, anywhere but down at Phil's house. Yep. Well, I'm so telling you, we they, we they can cook put it out, too much. Or we something. can we put out the Creole food and we can do it well. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to restaurants when we went around selling duck calls, and we would eat stuff, and then we'd figure out what was in it, and we got went home and learned how to make it better. Yeah, Phil uses John Fulce's cookbook a lot. John, Fo yep. that's yep. a good question. Whose cookbook, not your own, who would you go to? Phil's, John Fulce. Yeah, I've used his, and um, I can't believe it. I think I can't think of the name of the cookbooks that I've used. But there's two or three that Cajun cookbooks that we do use from, and there was one that I book. It's called Sweets Sweets from Louisiana, mm -hmm. and you know, it was just a whole bunch of ladies, and they did different things. I got ideas from them. So I take ideas from other people's stuff and then mix it with stuff I've already learned. Then, but the big thing you got to know is you cannot make something, and it's a mess. Well, throw it out and start over. You can't just say, well, I'll never cook that again. I mean, that's a loser, you know? You keep trying to go and do it till you get your best. Hey. Well, most people, the key to it is what you say a while ago. You love to do it. That's right. That's why it's so good. Because mm -hmm. most people, cooking a meal is uh, just a chore that they do, but they don't care nothing about it. Well, if you don't care nothing about it, you just throw a bunch of junk together. And, then, you know, and if the people at the table just eat it, because one thing that Robertson's going to do, when they eat, they're going to taste it and say, uh, you kind of this here ain't ain't up to your standards. Well, you know, Kay's Kay's style of cooking is is I hate to say it, but it, and it's sad that this it's gonna be a thing of the past unless some of these younger generations step up and learn the the old ways of doing things. What does Phil call it? Old woman cooking. <laughs> that, that's well, what no, Phil grandmama. Calls it. Yeah. grandmama. Well, here's the only thing I say about my cooking. Them hands, okay. It's important because, hey, that meal is made, and there's a lot of love mm -hmm. rolled into that dough. Yeah, and That's there's right. also some good okay. old Crisco really rolled is. in there and butter, too. Yep. Thank you. So right. here's one thing about my cooking. You may not be able to stay on it all the time because it is a little rich. So you come over uh, three or four days and do some, you know, healthier stuff. <laughs> but when you get on mine, I'm going to tell you something. It might make you gain a little bit. And the only reason I know that from myself is I have to wear three girdles now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll yeah, tell you yeah, what, it's okay. worth it. It was worth it. So yeah. Somebody like Johnny D would be in a bind if he lived at your house. Oh, well, because we can, my wife can kind of cook too. Yeah. She's got both of us. I heard K's she was cookbook. good. We're Pioneer Woman fans. I've mentioned that before. If you don't have any discipline, oh, yeah. you, I get you are going to gain some serious poundage around here. That's why we got Jay, though, whose physical training can take the weight right off of you. It may kill you doing it. But. Well, Sai lasted about a week. I'll he gave up. Hey. He I'll gave just, up. I'll just have to live with the weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about joining this boxing club. Uh, I think you should. And we should film it. Uh, right. That would be <laughs> Well, Miss Kay, I've had a blast. Si, have you enjoyed having enjoyed your yep. sister-in-law here? Going back in who, time. Who he calls you? me his real sister. Right. Yep. Well, she is. She's always been my oldest sister. That's true. Your oldest then? Yeah. 
And you've just been stuck with both of them right. ever since. Yeah, I really, I married two, two Robertsons. <laughs> married two know. of them. Well, well there's Phil, a. Phil's actually accused me. You love her too, don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. Well, yeah. I said, but not the way you're thinking. I he love loves her as me a as sister. a sister. That's right. That's and, right. and look, there's not a, not another woman that I don't <laughs> love more than Miss Kay. And she is such a great example for young women across the world. So. Amen. And that's going to lead us into our Bible verse. I'm, I'm reading this one just about you, Miss Kay. It's going to be Proverbs 31, 28 through 31. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Miss Kay, we're all sitting here today because of you. Without you, none of this exists. Well, now y'all are trying to make me cry. I'm not trying to make you cry. I'm just glad you joined us today. Thank you so much. Well, I had a blast. Oh, I'm going to come cook for y'all tomorrow. Is there any way you can make a custard pie? Ooh. I got the crust yeah, chilling in the, ov- oh. in the refrigerator. In the refrigerator. That is a yes. That's a good one. I can whip it out tonight. What time are we going down there? I'll, I'll come pick you up. <laughs> well, we gotta out. plan the menu. Right. Right. Oh, yep. you gotta cook. You gotta cook for Will tomorrow. Never mind. Hey, she'll make that too. Oh, I can do two things. You can do two. <laughs> we can keep going. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Miss Kay, for being here. Be sure to subscribe thanks. to the YouTube channel, Miss Kay. Love you. Love you all. <laughs>